All right, so now we're going to look at a new method for dealing with bars and objects that are not in pure rotation, right? So in pure rotation, V equals R omega. But if it's not in pure rotation, uh, a last section was using the relative velocity method. And that's a great method, and we were using the relative velocity method for those bars so we could almost kind of jump from A to B or jump from one into another, jump from one velocity that you do know to one velocity that you don't know. Um, and in the meantime, you were, we were solving the uh, angular velocity of that bar. Uh, so <clears throat> here's a new method. Let's look at this bar AB. Uh, and maybe point A is going this way down to the left. Point B is going this way up right here. Um, <clears throat> it's not in pure rotation. Uh, so we can't just use V equals R omega. <clears throat> but... Uh, Remember, so remember for every rigid body, there's there's only one angular velocity. There's one angular velocity for this bar, omega a b. Uh, and remember our equations that v equals r omega. So v a equals r omega, v b equals r omega. Uh, I, you know, I lied. I said you can't use those unless they're in pure rotation. Uh, we can't exactly use those on this bar just yet, but they're still true. All right, these are still true, uh, but how did we define this R? How did we define this R? So this is from the center of rotation. So this would kind of be like an RA to the point you're interested in. So that would be from the center of rotation to point A. Uh, this would be RB from center of rotation to point B. Well, what if it's not in pure rotation? What if there is no center of rotation that we can see? <clears throat> there actually still is a center of rotation. Uh, where, let me pause it and just kind of think about this. Where is the center of rotation for this problem, for this bar, bar AB. Where is the center of rotation for bar AB? Well, I don't want to spoil it for you, uh, but the center of rotation may not be on the object. The center of rotation doesn't have to be on the object. And so in this case, it is not. Center rotation is not on the object. <clears throat> think about the, think about a, a, a disc, let's think over here, a disc that is rotating, that is pinned about its center. <clears throat> a disc that is pinned about its center, where is its center of rotation? It's at the center, right, right here. Uh, where, but think about the velocity vectors on this disk. The velocity vectors would be here, 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 here. You know, th these velocity vectors would be right there. <clears throat> and the center would be kind of where these spokes intersect. So if we draw lines perpendicular to the velocity vectors, draw lines perpendicular to velocity vectors, if we draw lines perpendicular to velocity vectors, the point where those lines intersect, that is the center of rotation. And then it's almost as if we could make this imaginary disk. Let's say here's an imaginary disk <clears throat> and this bar is just glued, bolted on top of an imaginary disk rotating about this. We, will, we won't call it the center of rotation, we'll call it the instantaneous center of rotation. Okay? And so these lines right here almost like the spokes on a tire, I'll call them radial lines. 
radial lines that are perpendicular to the velocity. So where's the center of rotation? It is where radial lines intersect. Where radial lines intersect. And radial lines <coughs> are lines perpendicular to the direction of the velocity. Uh, let's see. Velocity. Lines perpendicular to velocity. Right? And then... <coughs> If you know where the instantaneous center is, and if you know it's this is almost like a bar that is um, glued on top of a disc, then this distance to the instantaneous center would be RB. This distance would be RA. And if we know those distances, then we, we actually can use V equals R omega, V equals R omega, V equals R omega. All right? So let's kind of give us some rules, right? Every rigid body will have a center of rotation that might, it might be changing, might not be on the rigid body. It is called the instantaneous center of zero velocity. How can we find it? <clears throat> well, draw the velocity vectors. So I just kind of, I'll talk about those, the, the um, velocity vector um, PDF to, to give you some help, you know. A lot of times these are connected to, maybe this is connected to a disc right here. And so from that disc, you could know the direction of velocity. Maybe point B is in a slot. So you know the direction because it's in a slot. Maybe it is connected to a link um, that is fixed right here. So there are lots of things that it's connected to <clears throat> where you can know the velocity, the direction of the velocity. So draw those velocity vectors. Then draw radial lines. So draw lines that are perpendicular to the velocity. I draw them, kind of extend them in both directions. Uh, <clears throat> and then where they intersect right there is the instantaneous center. All right. And then the hardest part of these problems is calculating the distance. RB calculating the distance RA. How do you do that? You might have to use um, the... Um, law of sines, law of cosines. Uh, sometimes it's like, oh, okay, well, well, here is, here's a triangle, and if you know this angle, that angle, that angle, if you know one side, law of cosines, you can find the other side's angles add up to 180 degrees, inside a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Uh, <clears throat> so lots of different ways that you can find that RA and RB. And then when you find RA and RB, you've, you've done the hardest part of the problem. Because then, what equations do you use? You use V equals R omega. That's the only equation you need to use next. V equals R omega, V equals R omega, V equals R omega uh, to find, you know, to, to solve what you're looking for. So the, uh, <clears throat> the these R's, let me, these R's are distances from the instantaneous center to your point distances to your point, right? V equals R omega, that R needs to be from the center of rotation uh, to the point right there. Now, <clears throat> these are just, these equa equations are just magnitudes. These aren't vector equations. Uh, you don't have to say, oh, well, R, RB is negative 3I plus 4J or something like that. <clears> That's <throat> just a magnitude. What's the magnitude? But that also means you need to be able to visualize yourself. Visualize the direction of yourself. If you know VA is right there to the left, to the right, I mean, and you know that its, it's center is right here, then what does that tell you about omega? That tells you that the omega would be counterclockwise. And similarly, if you know the omega is counterclockwise, then you know VB is uh, that way. All right, so the hardest part, <clears throat> draw, drawing those radial lines and finding where they intersect and calculating those R values, R, A, and R, B, then the rest of it's easy. Then you can use that method uh, to solve the same problems we have been doing, the same problems we have been doing with relative velocity method. Now we've just got a new, a different method, and we'll get the exact same answers uh, as we were using the relative velocity method. 
All right. So let's do some problems. 